everyone. We're going to be carrying on with our learning about newspaper reports today. And we're going to look at one really important feature of newspaper reports, which are quotes. So by the end of this lesson, we should be able to explain what a quote is. We might be able to say what Toby and Samuel could say at the end of the story that we read the other day. And we want to be able to use accurate punctuation. Let's find out more. So before we get to talking about quotes, you might want to remind yourself what happened to Toby and Samuel Pepys in the story that we read on Tuesday. How do you think they felt once the fire was out? So not at different points in the story, that's what we talked about with the video we watched on Monday, but how did Toby and Samuel feel after everything had happened, when it was all over? And why do you think that they felt that way? Try and have a chat with someone at home or in school about why they would have felt that way, and then we'll carry on. So hopefully you've got some ideas about Toby and Samuel Pepys' feelings. I want you to just kind of put those to one side in your mind for a moment, because we're going to talk about what a quote actually is. So as I said earlier on, quotes are a really important part of newspaper reports. And a quote is what someone says after an event has happened. And it's about what the newspaper report is about. So if it were about the coronavirus, say, then the person will be talking about the coronavirus. Or if it was about a anim certain animal, it would then be someone talking about that animal. And I had a look on BBC News on Newsround. And at the moment, I don't know if you know about this, it's really interesting that NASA, who Neil Armstrong worked for, they have recently landed a spacecraft on Mars. So there's no humans, it's just like computerised. And they've landed it on Mars to find out more. And there is a news story on the Newsround website that explains what's happened. And in that news story, they have interviewed someone they've spoken to someone who works for NASA who's worked on this Mars program and there is a quote so this person has said something about the mission to Mars and Newsround have reported it and this is what a spokesman for NASA said I've been waiting 25 years for the opportunity to see a spacecraft land on Mars it was worth the wait so they've spoken that's not me saying I've wanted to have been waiting it's by someone who works for NASA and they have written exactly what that person said. They've not tried to change it. They've written exactly what that person said about landing on Mars. And that's what a quote is. It's a comment almost about what the event that's being reported in the newspaper. So to get a comment or a quote from somebody, these normally happen after an event, as we've already said. It might be that someone who works on a newspaper will say, can you tell me about what happened, how you felt? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to imagine that we work on a newspaper and that we have met some different characters from the story that we read the other day. We're going to start with Toby and then we're going to think about the King and Samuel Pepys and Thomas Farriner, who Thomas Farriner was the baker. He was the person who owned the bakery in Pudding Lane. So you're going to have a think about those four characters. If we could travel back in time to 1666, and the day after the fire's been put out and London's all kind of charred and smoky, what would these people say? And you could say, oh, what do you think about the fire, Samuel Pepys? And you've got to imagine what he would talk about. He might want to say what's happened. He might want to say he's really proud of having put the fire out. And we're going to do that for each of those people. It might even be that the baker wants to say sorry. So you can see here, this is a section of the worksheet that you've got. This is the first box about Toby. And there is a box with a speech bubble to make it look like this is what that character's saying after the fire's been put out. So I've written an example for what I think Toby might say. So I think Toby might say, I had never seen such a large hot fire before. Huge buildings burned around me. I was so terrified because I thought the fire would get me. Samuel Pepys is a hero. It was his idea that helped stop the fire. So 
you might think something completely different. You might disagree with my ideas about Toby and it's entirely up to you. Everybody will have their own ideas. But you can see that I've written in proper sentences that start with a capital letter and a full stop. Mrs Lee and I are doing lots of reminders about those things at the moment. And also I've tried to get in some noun phrases. I've said it's not just that I'd never seen a fire. I'd never seen such a large hot fire. Huge buildings. So I've tried to add in some extra details like we've been doing before. But the most important thing is that we write in proper sentences. If you interviewed somebody, they wouldn't just say sad because my house burned down. They would speak in a proper sentence. So you need to write as though someone is talking. So your mission is to find the activity sheet that's labelled with Thursday. You'll see there are four pictures. You need to imagine what each character in the story would say if you spoke to them after the fire was out. So remember, we've got that extra one, the baker who owned the bakery where the fire began. Remember, like I've already said, we need to write in proper sentences like the person is talking and we need to use proper punctuation. We need a capital letter at the beginning and we need a full stop at the end. Mrs Lee and I would love it if we didn't have to remind anybody about capital letters and full stops. So if you need any help, we'll be available on Teams. And when you finish, you can email us a photograph of your work. I'm looking forward to seeing your ideas and don't forget that punctuation.